let's get into some shite. Hello, my friends. Welcome to Apocalyptic. Uh, that was a weird voice. I don't know why I did it, but hey, it's there. I'm I'm leaving it. Just putting it out there. How you doing? How you feeling? I'm I'm doing pretty good. A little hyper, maybe. Had some coffee this morning. Oh, I'm gonna kind of tone it down. Deep breathe. Um, yeah. Oh, so this is kind of a weird. I guess gonna be a weird podcast. I got a lot of things on my mind to talk about today. So uh, it should be full of stuff for you to listen to. You feeling good? You feeling uh, happy this uh, 2023? Are you? Have you taken down your Christmas tree yet? You know, I'm. Uh, that's what I'm doing today. I'm going to take down my tree, going to get rid of Christmas. Not looking forward to it, really. But I think I've accepted it. I think I'm okay. Um, you know, you don't want to go too long. Uh, my wife is Spanish and they uh, tend to want to... Do the 12 days of Christmas. I think she said the 6 was when they leave it up. And here it is a little past that. But we're going to take it down anyway. It should be all right. And uh, so that's my day. And then I, um, you know, I think I talked last week about moving my studio around. I'm going to be doing that today. I'm actually going to move the sound. The stuff that I record from. I'm going to move that today. Hopefully I can make it work again i could set it up properly so we'll still have a podcast thursday monday podcasts are kind of interesting uh just starting off you know no everybody's kind of grouchy on monday what do you got to look forward to it's just a whole week of work and doing stuff it's not your time i don't know who uh came up with that idea years and years ago that you weren't allowed to have time on your own i was reading uh last night i think that if you live to be 90 years old, you will have slept 30 years. Because we live, we, we uh, uh, sleep thir about 30% of our lives. So you can expect if we live to be 90, hope so, like to keep going after that. But you can expect to have slept 30 years. It's crazy. So it seems like kind of a waste of time. Um, but you think about that with working, so you put the work in there too. What do you? What is that? Um, uh, eight hours a day, right? Eight times five, 40 hours a week. For and you just keep doing the multiplying. Let's say people retire at sixty-five. Let's go sixty even. Let's just cut it a little bit less. And you can figure out how much time you sleep. Thirty years. How much time you would work in that amount of time when you're when you're uh, so what is that two-thirds 60 if you retire at 60 right i don't know if my math is correct so we get no time to ourselves and someone decided that we have to put in that much time to the big corporate people and i'm not going to say we shouldn't we live in a society where you got to kind of have that but there was a time when everything was free, you know, your gardens, your trees had the food. You could barter with other people who are craft people for other things that you need. Trade them food for some furniture, some clothes, candy, you know. This this person was really good at making donuts. So, you know, you, you trade some, some of your corn for some donuts can't do that much anymore you still a little bit you can i like the bartering thing i think it's kind of cool but the whole giving up your life because you're going to get to a point where you just look where you're i don't know if we're lucky you're on, in, on your deathbed that doesn't sound like luck. but yeah if you if you lived and you didn't get in a tragic way or you get to lay on your bed and think about what you've done through your whole life and you know you're going to think, I spent way too much time working. I didn't spend time doing the stuff I would like to do right now that I can't get out of bed to do. That's what I wished I could be doing. Spending more time with people that you really like spending time with. Your friends, family, your partner, you know, 
Make a little more love. Drink a little more beer. Have another slice of pizza. Who cares? Do it. Don't spend your day moving your podcast equipment around. Actually, I don't mind doing that too much because uh, I'll have a better space and it'll feel good. I don't, maybe, I don't know if it's going to make the show any better. It might. God knows it needs to be better. Anyway, um, so that's that. Taking my tree down today. Going to get back to normal. Uh, you know, the, the distance between like when you take your tree down. So we got basically 11 months, maybe 10. And that may, and then when you put it up in 10 months, you start feeling that feeling again. It's all exciting. Christmas is coming back. The holidays are here. It's just a psychology thing. It's psychological. It's just mind just going, just things. It's like mind candy. It's things to do to keep your mind occupied, to keep you distracted, make you think you're having fun. And then one day you realize you're just dying. <laughs> Happy Monday to you. We're having a crisis at my house. You know, we, uh, I, I, I mentioned this, I think the first show I did, uh, about, uh, I, at the time we lost our coffee scoop. All right. And we did find it and, um, uh, we've been scooping coffee since. And at Christmas time I was somewhere and I found a, a deal on a brand new, it was an Ikea coffee scoop and it was still in the package. I think I found it at Goodwill. That's where I found it. Still in the package, never open. And it had two things, it had a coffee scoop and it had a coffee bag closer, which I don't really need that, but it was in there. And the scoop looked cool. It was, it was metal, stainless. Our scoop is plastic, so it's moving up in the world, finally. All my hard work is paying off. I'm, I now have a stainless steel coffee scoop. So I brought it home, and then what we found out was that the plastic scoop scoops less coffee than the stainless scoop. So we, we habitually put however many scoops that you need to put it. Now we got to do math. We got to figure out now how many scoops of the plastic equals the stainless scoop. And we got to put it in because we don't want our coffee screwed up. So I messed up big time yesterday. Uh, I put a half a scoop less than I should, and the coffee tasted horrible. It tasted like tea. So I'm relearning to make coffee now, which is embarrassing at my age. But anyway, that it, it's, it just goes to show you how much of a habit that you live in your life. You're just so, you know, you do things, you don't want to think about them. You don't want to think like you get in your car, you turn your keys, but all of a sudden you lease a car that doesn't have keys to turn. You just push a button. I did that for two years, maybe a year, two years, I think. Got used to pushing the button instead of turning the keys. I thought I was never going to get used to that. Then I switched cars again. Now I got a key. I cannot remember to take my key out of my pocket to put in the key thing. And I've been doing that for, I don't know, 40 something years. Habitual life. Don't think about stuff. We don't, let's set everything up so we don't have to think about it. We don't want to have to count how many times we're scooping the coffee. I don't want to. All right. Oh, I did something really good last night. Um, I wish I'd discovered this earlier in the season. We had a, a, a we had some eggnog left over. My wife and I were gonna we were gonna take down our tree last night. We we're gonna put a movie on. Um, I don't know, and then and then take down the tree. And I was gonna finish finish off the eggnog. So we didn't do the movie. We didn't take down the tree. But so there was just like a half a glass of eggnog left. <laughs> so I decided I would do it. And then uh, oh, I had a flash of inspiration. This is a secret for you. And you might not want to do it now. And you probably can't because it's hard to find eggnog. But next year, get you some eggnog. Get you get you some eggnog. There's your East Tennessee right there. Get you some eggnog. Pour it in your glass. Bailey's Irish cream on top of that. Holy crap, that was good. It's so sweet. It's like can liquid candy or liquid cake. I don't know. It's better than candy, really. And then I topped it off. I put a little tiny bit of Buffalo Trace whiskey in there with it. Not a lot. 
Just a little. I didn't want to, you know, you, I'm not Foster Brooks. Google him. Uh, I just, I just wanted the taste. And it's hard enough at my age drinking eggnog at night. But I, you discover when you get older why all the old people, why all the 80-year-olds, 70, 80-year-olds go to early buffet. You have to. You'll never sleep if you don't. you got to go at four. You got to eat at four. That's Jesus doing that to you. That's your, that's not your decision. That's your, it's made for you. That's nature. Jesus, God, Muhammad, Buddha, whoever you believe is messing around with your body when you get old. That's who's doing it. But I had some eggnog. It didn't keep me up. I was lucky. I think it's just because it was so little, but boy, that was good. I'm going to try to keep it in mind for next year. And um, I'm going to have a little bit of eggnog, uh, Irish cream, mm, Bailey's. Yeah, good, good stuff. Um, and it's probably good I didn't try to take down the tree. <laughs> I think I just throw everything into a box. Next year, you open up and go, what, what happened? What were we doing? I won't remember the eggnog, but yeah, it was good stuff. So I was thinking this morning. Um, and, and help me think here. What would you consider foods that under normal circumstances you just can't ruin? You know what I'm saying? I mean, I know you could anybody could ruin something. You could put too much salt in it, you, you know, put chemicals, dog poop. I don't know. You there's if you want to ruin any dish, you can. But I'm just saying under normal circumstances, a normal regular cook just a, a great cook or just an average regular person, anybody could make this food and it's good. It's just like you just can't ruin it. What what would those be to you? I came up with uh, six. Six of them, six foods. There might be a, a bit of a um, theme to them, I don't know. But it's all I can think of. There's, I'm, I know there's more. There's got to be more. I mean, you could say salad. All right, I'm just saying that off the top of my head. How can you screw up salad? I guess you could. But again, normal circumstances, just putting lettuce in there, fruit, I mean, uh, uh, vegetables. So really, I'm going to add seven. You can't really screw up salad. Not everybody likes salad. But this is like great foods, yummy foods. You just can't screw up. So my number one is mac and cheese. Now... I've had some mac and cheese that wasn't as good as other mac and cheese. I mean, I've had mac and cheese that was just an orgasm in a bowl. <laughs> You're asking, where have I been eating? No, it was, uh, maybe it wasn't mac and cheese. Um, no, mac and cheese. Good, you know what I'm talking about. This is the good mac and cheese. This is professional level. Got a little bit of crust on it, you know, on the top. Oh, man, not burned, just the cheese, little tiny bit of crusty. Maybe they, I don't know, what do you put bacon on? The, I don't do the meat, but bacon, a little bit of um, um, uh, bread crumbles. I don't know what to call it, um, toasty things. <laughs> but not only that, just the cheese itself, a little bit, just, you know, just the touch. Not burned. That's good stuff. That's the good mac and cheese. And the cheese, really good sharp cheddar. I don't, you know, not the Velveeta. Not, you don't want that. Some people do the Velveeta and it's creamy. It's okay. But no, the, the real cheesy taste. Get you some Cabot, Cabot cheese and put in there. Mmm. Yeah. So anyway, um, mac and cheese. You can't screw it up. You can make mac and cheese not as good. But it's still mac and cheese. I've had, I've gone to a convenience store and got a little thing of mac and cheese. I'm like, all right, not the best, but hey, it's good. It's mac and cheese. Uh, number two, pizza. Again, I've had some pizzas weren't as good as other pizzas, but it's pizza. Pizza's pizza. You know, you can screw it up by burning it or whatever, but just putting stuff on it. It's great. Pizza's fine. I'll have it almost every day if I want to. Not really, because I want to, but I don't. It's good, though. All pizzas, at least average or better. There's just no shitty pizza. 
If there is, you can tell me about it. I don't know. All right, number three is a little weird for me. Chicken. Um, I haven't had chicken in years. Uh, I became vegetarian when I was 31 years old. Uh, next year, man, next year I will be vegetarian over half my life. Boom. Didn't think that would happen. Um, but yeah, chicken. Is there a way to screw up chicken? I mean, there are there are ways to cook chicken that weren't my favorite. I didn't. I never liked baked chicken. That wasn't my favorite. Fried chicken was always the best. Um, coated, you know, KFC kind of fried chicken. That you can't beat that. That's the best. But you can't. How do you screw it up? Can you screw up chicken? The only way that I ever knew that you could screw up any kind of meat for me was to put something sweet on it. So like if you rubbed it down with pineapple, ugh, honey chicken, no. I mean, some people have honey barbecue. You put the barbecue sauce in there. Um, and That wasn't for me. I don't like that. I can understand the bar a sweet barbecue sauce, maybe. All right, well, I'll, give, I'll, I'll say that's okay. But you can't screw it up. You can't really screw up chicken, I don't think. Don't put any pineapple on chicken, all right? Uh, which came first, chicken or the egg? That's the thing. Eggs, you can't hardly screw up. Could put some stuff in it. Maybe I don't like the taste of it, but I don't know. Maybe you can make two runny eggs. All right. But still, you can fix that, right? You just... Fried eggs, great. Scrambled eggs, great. Boiled eggs, fine. How do you screw up eggs? You can go to a bad diner, bad truck stop, and just get scrambled eggs. They're still fine. They're okay. As long as there's not hair in them or anything like that. All right. This one my wife suggested, and I thought about it, and I was like, yeah, that's true. Tuna salad. Um, it's always good. Tuna salad. Some tuna salad is really good. The other tuna salad is okay. That's pretty good. It's fine. You can't hardly really screw up tuna salad. I've had bad egg salad, and that's kind of going back to what I was saying just now. You couldn't screw up eggs. Eggs, if if you make egg salad, you might be able to screw them up, but I, I wouldn't call that eggs. That's that's egg salad. Two separate little dishes. Too strong of pickles in egg salad. There are other ingredients saying, eh, I don't want that. Tuna salad can't mess up. And finally... I had to think about this one. I again, I, I'll stand by it too. Um, grilled cheese sandwiches, even the worst grilled cheese sandwich. I've been, I've had some that uh, not worse. Just, I mean, just, and it's usually the bread. You know, they don't know how to prepare the bread. They don't butter it right. They don't uh, toast it right. But grilled cheese sandwiches, you could go almost any restaurant and order it, and it's satisfying. It's fine. It's grilled cheese, and you and and yeah. That's, it's a great thing. You can't, again, you can't mess up cheese hardly. I don't, there's a lot of cheese I don't like, so maybe I'll, I'll be careful with that one. But grilled cheese, man, I'm putting that on my list. So there you go. That's six. If you want to count the salad, seven, but I'm going to just say six foods. I say you can't screw up. I'll eat them no matter what. Not the chicken, but I'll eat them. Do you have any different from my list? You can call me and tell me, 678-348-0008. That's the listener line on Apocalyptic. We do have this listener line set up for you so that you could share your information. You could you could give me feedback. You talk to me, and I'll put you on the show. I, I swear I will. <laughs> That's a vow. If you don't want to talk to me, you could text that same number, 678-348-0008. And uh, just give me your feedback. Tell me your favorite foods, which ones you can't screw up, no matter what. I know I've forgotten some. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll tell everybody your opinion. I'll let people know what you think you can't screw up. But you can also uh, send me an email, rick at apocalyptic.com. I'll get that email. Uh, I'll also get direct messages on uh, Facebook if you want to do that. So there's so many ways. To reach out and touch me. Visit the website, apocalyptic.com. All right, I think I covered them all. There's so many ways to uh, to reach out to the show. I'm waiting. I'm uh, Operators are standing by. You know what I'm doing? I'm checking out of politics this year. I don't know if I told you that. I, uh, I'm just not going to keep up with it. 
hardly, but sometimes you have to. The uh, the entire thing that just happened with the Speaker of the House was uh, having, I think it went up to 15 votes. Uh, I That was amusing. I could not not watch that. That was funny. I love it when when political groups end up attacking themselves <laughs> instead of the uh, opponent. Uh, when it starts collapsing from within, I love that. So uh, that happened to a certain extent. It was kind of funny, but they're they're back on. They're they're gonna do whatever they're gonna do. I don't know. I don't have time for it. I don't want to waste time. I know it affects me. I'm an American. I live in America. Whatever they do, whatever they decide to do, no matter how bad it is, no matter how good it is, it's gonna affect me some way. So I should get involved, and I and I do. I'm gonna get involved. I'm I'm not gonna stop voting. I will vote, but just keeping up with it and getting involved. I don't know. People fight it out. You're grown ups. Quit being childish. You know, you got a lot of people that you're looking out for, not just your small little group. You're looking out for everybody. So let's kind of let's do this right. All right. I don't think I think that's way too much to ask from anybody. Got a little worked up there. Sorry about that. Need to kind of relax. You know, I did a, a meditation class yesterday, but a meditation session. I won't call it a class. I didn't actually teach. Um, although I will, if someone wants. This was just a session. We all kind of got together at the gallery and and did some uh, meditation, which was nice. But I sat on the floor. I don't do meditation on the floor. Let me just say, I I like to sit in a chair. Um, but I don't know why here we are in public. I got to sit on a cushion in the floor cause that's what you're supposed to do. I, I didn't even think about it. I was like, and I, and I actually, I have a, like a stadium seat, like a seat you take to uh football, baseball games, whatever, and put in the stadium. It's got a little back on it, really easy to carry. It folds up and I've got one of those. You put it on the floor, you can sit down, you got, it's got a little support for your back and I need to have that. So I had one of those and I got, and I sat down I sh and then, so it was 45 minutes, just kind of a, you know, a good meditation session, but three times I had to move my legs because three times my legs fell asleep, which really in 45 minutes, not bad, three times. So I think I got 20 minutes into it and I was thinking, man, I'm feeling good. This is great. I can go the whole way. And then you feel it. It's like, uh oh, leg going to sleep. There it goes. So I had to shuffle around, move around, and uh, at the end of it, I thought I was, I thought my legs were going again, but at the end of it, uh, I couldn't stand up for about five minutes. And today, uh, over 24 hours later, I, keep my, I could still feel the effects of my legs. My legs still like weak. So I think I'm going to just go to a chair. We'll do a chair. I don't know why you need to know all that. But I just feel it in my legs. Thought I'd share it with you. That's what I like to do on the show, share things. And I hope you share. I hope you share yourself with me. You know what I don't understand? I'm gonna we're talking about meditation. I can't figure out. I was watching a video of India. There's a guru, holy guy, holy somebody in 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 India. And I mean literally, I know it was tens of thousands of people, but possibly hundreds of thousands of people. We're in the audience just going crazy over this one person who was just a little tiny person on stage, I guess. And it's easy to look at that and kind of judge that and go, oh, it's superstitious kind of people, whatever. But you think about it, Billy Graham, you know, he used to, you know, Billy Graham is a preacher, he used to sell out stadiums, football stadiums, 100,000 people there, three nights in a row. Billy Graham crusade when I was in high school, man, I can remember that. That was a big thing. And he'd come to Knoxville and then sell out Nayland stadium, home of the Vols. <laughs> oh, wow. So, um, but I don't know now. Why, why do we need holy people? Why do we need gurus? Why do we need to lift these people up tv preachers regular preachers why do we need to put them on a pedestal why do we need to make them better than us there's some kind of weird psychological thing where we feel like we're not doing it right and they are they got their shit together we don't we're still working on ours 
So we're going to just, that, that's who we're aspiring to. And I hear it all the I hear it, I used to hear it all the time from little old ladies about when they were talking, and I, I'm sorry, this is not a sexist thing. I, I just didn't hear it that much from dudes. But the little old ladies would always really, really admire the pastor. You know, Pastor Roberts, he's such a great man, man of the Lord. <laughs> um, and and that's that it, that kind of um, uh, putting on the pedestal scenario happens all the time, even in Christian churches. In Catholicism, they've got that hierarchy. You know, you get the the uh, the priest, the bishop, the pope, whatever. It keeps going. I don't know. It's like the military. But you don't get in Protestant church where I grew up, it was just a pastor. And but still you you have that putting them up higher than you. And it makes there's something weird that makes us feel better about that. It's like we're screwing things up in our lives, but it's good to know that this person isn't. This person's got it together. And then we find out that that person has been screwing up. That person has an alcohol problem. That person has a secretary problem. That person has a deacon problem <laughs> or a problem with kids or a problem with animal. I don't know. I'm not spreading rumors here. But if you've ever read the list of the Southern Baptist pastors who were um, accused, man, read that list. It's, it's on the Internet. There's a lot of them. And these are these are people that their congregation looked at as holy. They were they had a better a much closer connection to God than we do. And it doesn't do anything. It 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 creates this weird illusion that we don't need anymore. I think it's time to put it away. We all have the connection that we need. To our source, our creator, right here where we're sitting, right here where we're standing. We don't need anybody to interpret it. We don't need anybody to um, do it for us. It's us. It's uh, that. If you don't, if you know anything about what Jesus from the Bible taught, it's that you don't have to have all of this other stuff. It's right there with you. And then people screwed it up. They put it exactly back where it was, where you had to have priests and preachers and pastors and bishops and all of that stuff to tell you how to do it. We don't need the holy men. We're the holy men. Holy men screw up just like we do. So why do we need to put them up there? You know, maybe they studied something a little longer. That's cool. Teachers are great. We need teachers. I don't, I didn't put my second grade teacher up on any kind of pedestal, no matter how much she asked me to. You just, it's their teachers. Okay, thank you. Thanks for teaching, teacher. Thanks for making that your career. It's very valuable. Teachers are valuable, but they're not holy. So let's break down that system now. You and me, let's do it. Let's get in there and break it down. We don't need the holy people. All right, I'm doing it. That's one of my missions that I'm making for 2023. Got to start a website. Uh, thanks, everybody, for listening to Apocalyptic. It means a lot to me. means a lot to you. I like this fellowship that we have. I like these little talks. Uh, I try to keep them 30 minutes or less um, in that. I think I, so far we're doing pretty good. Um, if you want to hear anything specific, you want me to talk about anything, you want me to even talk to you, just uh, write me a letter. Send me an email. If you don't know how, you haven't been paying attention. I already told you. I'm not going to tell you again. I will tell you the listener line, 678-348-0008. You can call the listener line if you choose. But there are other ways to do it. And um, otherwise, I, I'm just going to be moving things. I'm going to be moving all day. Maybe having some delicious pizza and macaroni and cheese. Man, that is really good. Um, and that's, that's going to be my life from now on. I'm not afraid of it. Um, and because of that, I would like to be lifted up as a holy man. And I want everybody to worship me.